Alright folks, you know what day it is, you know what time it is, we got Sunday morning coffee going on. Um, let's address some simple facts, man. We've just been grinding lately at the shop. Uh, this exact second I don't have internet at the house, I run off my hotspot on my phone, I will be, obviously you'll see this, I'll post this. I got other videos in the wings that I just, I don't have the bandwidth to load up, so bear with me. We're shooting footage, we're making progress, um shop speak we got a motorcycle we fucked up the decals that go on it little Yamaha 750 I think I don't remember <laughs> there's a picture of a purple one we did on the intro on the, the the shop video intro same thing same exact bike same exact color In fact, I had to go out in the old shop and dig around and find the can for the paint that I saved so we could get the color reproduced. We used RM on that. It's very nice. So we fouled up the decals. Uh, owner stopped by to check everything out. We had a wet sand to polish everything out and put the decals on. Um, I told him that. It's like, you can order them and bill us. We can order them. I don't care. But since you ordered them to begin with, and apparently the decals were the wrong ones anyhow. He wanted the foil back so they looked like the factory original. what he got was something that needed to be clear coated over anyhow uh, 72 Chevy truck we haven't gotten anywhere with it 69 GMC G20 our machinist I still haven't been able to really get a hold of um, they're just turning out race car engines for race season it, racing season has started so it should slow down enough that I will be able to get a hold of Jerry our machinist Um, Camaro, most of the body panels are ready to paint. The tub is ready to block out. We got it in slick sand sitting in the booth. Um, we wound up jamming it and everything. The color of the car was painted. Somebody else had painted it since new. And it totally was not 3967 GMC White. Uh, we went back with 8554, which was the white they changed to at like 93. From 68 to like 93, they used 3967. They're on, they use 8554. I could be off on the years, but those are the colors. <coughs> so it's going from white to white, but it is going to be a full color change. Um, We've had some adders to deal with on that project, stripping the hood, some other rust that we found, bad rust, uh, below on the trunk pan tail section. So I'll get it cut out, cleaned up, and patched in. Uh, we can, I can do that, quite frankly I can do that if the car is painted, all the patchwork. And that's the intent is, I'm either going to do it while I'm blocking or after it's painted as we're finishing it up. Because I got to get up on jack stands to pull wheels. Monte Carlo is ready for body work. Uh, we actually rolled it out of the place it's set since we moved into that shop. So it's ready to go. Uh, 67 Mercedes. I haven't pulled into the shop yet. I need to get things. It's starting into our rainy season here. So pulling things around has been tough. Uh, I got Jeremy a new shop truck. You all know I don't drive right now. So. Uh, we need a shop truck. My 79 Chevy will be my truck when I get around to the logistics of uh, getting wheels up under my ass again. Which will keep me homebound most of the time because you can't hardly afford to feed a 454 these days. Um, what else? What else are we heading into? Uh, Monte Carlo, GMC, Chevy C10. Um, the owner of the C10, he owns a shop right around the corner from us. Brought us a little ditty to do, uh, a little Mitsu SUV. So we'll knock that out tomorrow. We'll get it back to him. So moving forward, we're keeping busy. The owner of United HVAC. Um, we had an unprecedented event in the shops uh, this Friday. I actually got brought a vehicle and told it was too loud. We cut Magnum Flow 40s out from underneath it, and I put in some nice walkers to replace it. <laughs> I've never made a vehicle quieter before. Not on purpose. 
Um, but okay. Who gives a damn? It's a, it's a professional vehicle that's supposed to have a professional public appearance. It never been buffed and probably rarely been washed. So we walked over it. We got to undercoat the truck. We've got to really clean the undercarriage good because there's no rust that I can see other than some surface rust like on body mounts and shit. So we want to avoid rust uh, 2004 so it's in great shape. Um, we're going to have to repaint the two front doors. It's a big four-door, four-by-four, three-quarter ton. <clears throat> we're gonna have to repaint the front doors, install a brake harness, a, a brake power brake system to it, yada yada, so and so. The work we do for United. Sandrail's coming back. Um, mind you, I never fabbed one of those up before. I didn't really know what I was doing. I just kind of metal tells you what what it needs to do is you're stretching across, you know, stretching skin across a frame. So I just kind of went with it. Um, we'll end up probably grinding down most of the paint and body we did. And really upgrading that. Because he went through and put a lot more money into this. It's a really nice ride now. For a sand rail especially. Um, I guess it would be actually street legal. He's got another one he bought that I think he's going to build for his wife from what I gather. Told him as long as he's got the money and we got the time. And I basically paid him to build the last sand rail. I got it over my head on something I didn't know what I was doing. Well, I figured out what I was doing. It just took a lot of hours, that's all. <coughs> Here's a subject I want to touch on. Each and every one of our asses is expendable. Each and every one of us, especially in our trade sense, can be replaced. And most of us get replaced from time to time from various customers and so on. But the true also swings the other way. You can fire a customer too. I have a tendency that I either push rates up till they quit coming or refuse service when I get a customer that lies to me, that flatly fucking lies to me. I don't stretch the truth, I don't evade answering, that was a scoundrel rat fuck I once was in a past life. Um, I tell them the dead on truth, bold face right there in front of them, and if they can't return the favor, um, they're not helping me build the company I want to build. You know, I'm we're building a hot rod shop. We're starting off with some shit work. It's alright, you gotta cut your teeth, you gotta earn your bones somehow. So I'm not upset about that. I'm not pissy because, oh, we're not building sixty or $80,000 hot rods, $100,000. We get there as our ability and shop's capacity allows. We're not ready for that kind of work. We don't do nice enough work to charge someone six figures for a car build. Not yet. We can, but it stretches our resources and capacity so thin there's certain things we do two or three times over because there's certain things we're still figuring out and learning. So keep in mind, as your skills evolve, as your your shop or personal, whatever you, you're doing, as it evolves, we're all expendable, including the customer. You can fire them. I have. And I've had customers fire me. I've had those customers that were great customers. A1 great customers. I didn't want to lose them. But it seemed like every time we did a job for them, whether it was a rush job or not a rush job or n shit just didn't turn out how it was supposed to, you know. It was, for lack of better explanation, substandard. <laughs> and I think some of that was just the piss poor mentality of dealing with these used car lot assholes that shit was substandard. 
We got away from that. We're, we're, we're done with that game. It's like the little Mitsu. We're going to sand it down with 320 on an interface, so it's not going to leave any big scratches. But we're not going to paint over that. We'll, we'll spot seal it at very least, because I know I exposed metal, but more than likely, we'll shoot a, just a 2K sealer, not an epoxy, just something to mask. Something that small bare spots of metal is okay for, and we can wet sand it and get it painted down the road. I won't use a lacquer on it because that's just uh, this is a lifetime finish type of project. But there you go. I've been working around the yard, been working with the kids, been we've been having a lot of fun. I'm burning a four foot tall, twelve foot log, long log in my backyard. A uh, buddy of mine works for a tree service company. That's how I heat my house. Well, they're dumping wood out where I used to park cars in front of the old shop. I got my log splitter pulled over by there. I'm going to start processing that out. My big aim is they can keep dumping wood here. I'll keep splitting it and processing it and cutting it up and stacking it. Once I got about eight cords sitting that's seasoned, anything after that that's seasoned, I'm going to start selling off. Because every year he's going to bring me more in the spring at the very least probably keep bringing me wood throughout the year. I'll call him every month or so and see if he's got more. Especially once I start wheedling this pile down. I've got at least 12 quarter lumber out there right now. <laughs> so, okay. Um, you know, to go along with that expendability, I run a shop. I don't run the best shop in the land. But here's another interesting aspect. The custom and the fabrication that we're willing to take on and tackle and in a lot of cases learn this is just about cutting parts off and putting new parts on so what if you have to make them when I frame houses they dropped off bunks of square fucking wood we had to build round shit out of and building houses they built everything literally everything from dog houses to 1.2 million dollar homes and let me tell you a little something. A $1.2 million home in Des Moines, Iowa is like a 7,000 square foot monster with all the frills. Cost of living is pretty easy. We're pretty insulated. We're pretty fortunate. So, having said that, it's just metal. Bend it, shrink it, stretch it, cut it, weld that shit up and grind it. If it doesn't look like what you want, you cut it off and start over. <coughs> and eventually you start learning to feel how that metal's moving and how to make it move the way you want it to. I must have it in my blood because I caught on more quickly than others around me that were trying to teach me basic skills. But again, that's where my shop name's from. Smith and Sons Welding was my great grandfather, and my great uncle. My great grandfather was a blacksmith before that, and a coal miner, and all sorts of other trades. Whatever it took to survive, he made it through the Depression. Um, but you really need to evaluate and realize the true value of what you do. You know, any good business model is going to portray this simple facet. You want to give greater value in work than you receive in dollars. That's what's going to keep you busy. That's what's going to make you a name. And we departed from that for a while. We were so frazzled and scattered. We weren't working like a team. I mean, Jeremy and I weren't bickering, but we just didn't have the ebb and flow that you need as a team. We want real good support for one another. That's a lot different now. <laughs> a couple months ago, everything just kind of clicked in place, and we've been jamming ever since. And it's good, because we've got the work. And another aspect to explain to motherfuckers is simple. I don't need the work, I need the money. If you don't want to pay what the job is worth, shove on. Um, don't get cocky about it. But there's going to come a time, just like we are right now, uh, the discount jobs are done and over. 
I, I can't do discount jobs. It's just ridiculous. So they can pay the fair value or we can shove on because we are busy we've got the work if it doesn't if I can't make more in a day for a simple quick project then just keep working on the projects I've got and I had to explain that to a customer two customers last week <clears throat> I said it's going to cost us much like, but you just and it's used car lot shit we're talking spray foam and fiberglass but you just got it yeah I just got it but that's going to take me four hours plus my materials and they wanted to butt 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 and haggle me haggle me haggle me and they didn't try too hard I pretty much have, have I guess have put an end to that just with my my mentality my authority I give numbers with there's not a question mark after in the sentences I give out a, a number composite number for a project um you know, I explained to them. It's like, look, I don't need the work. I need the money. If you can't give me a reasonable amount of money to get your project done, no matter how shitty you want it done, um, I can't do it. I can't. I can't pull it in the shop and bump good-paying work out of the way for pennies. You never have a, a a nickel waiting on a dime. You never have a dime waiting on a nickel. Um. We've had the nickel waiting on a dime syndrome for a long time, and we got away from that. But yes, you can't have you can't have a, a, a dime waiting on a, a dollar waiting on a dime, or a dime waiting on a nickel, or whatever that analogy is. You don't want to push off the good pay for a quickie for someone that, no matter how loyal they've been, how much they bring you, if they can't pay. They can't pay. <laughs> I'm gonna get up off here. That's just my two cents worth for the day. Um, find success in your life in how you personally perceive success. How you perceive su success is not the same as how I perceive success. Some people perceive success in dollar amounts, properties owned, cars acquired, children reared you know I'm going to consider it a personal success if both of my children go to college <laughs> don't have a fucking prison record and don't have kids until they're 30 that will be the the trifecta of success my life won't get any better at that point I can roll over and die the minute my kids turn 30 and I'll have prison records gone to college don't have kids you folks have a great day